In 2016, Philip Esformes, the owner of more than 30 nursing homes and assisted living facilities in the Miami area, was charged with the largest criminal health care fraud case in U.S. history. This Medicare fraud and money laundering scheme made Philip a $1 billion profit between 2009 and 2016. Along with Philip, a hospital administrator and physician's assistant, were also named in the indictment and charged with conspiracy, money laundering, and health care fraud. Philip, the 47-year-old, already wealthy healthcare businessman, used the scam to fund a lifestyle full of private jets, meetings with escorts and fancy hotels, personal basketball coaches for his son, and a $600,000 watch, the same one that hip-hop artist Drake showed off at a Raptor 76ers game in 2019. The watch, a Patek Philippe, is rose gold made of sapphire glass and features 1,343 diamonds on the case, bracelet, and dial. Philip wasn't shy about flashing as well. The Esformes Network, his operation of nursing homes and healthcare facilities, targeted the government-run programs of Medicare and Medicaid, which serve as health insurance plans for the elderly and impoverished. The indictment claimed that Philip and his associates billed Medicare and Medicaid for services that the residents at his facilities didn't need. Philip is responsible for stealing more than $1 billion from government health care programs meant to help people who are genuinely in need. $221 million of this came from fraudulent claims alone. This fraudulent billing cycle went on for 14 years. Assistant Attorney General of the Justice Department, Leslie Caldwell, called it the largest single criminal health care fraud case brought against individuals. According to the indictment, he used some money to pay his escorts travel and transportation expenses. In 2014, he self-reported a personal income of $78 million. The money allowed him to withdraw $4.8 million of cash, lease $2.4 million worth of luxury vehicles, purchase watches for $360,000 and $600,000, and pay $8.9 million bucks in credit card bills. He paid another $15.4 million to resolve a civil case of health care fraud for admitting two assisted living residents into a Miami hospital for no apparent reason. But he did not act alone. Odette Barca, the 49-year-old director of outreach programs at Larkin Community Hospital, and Arnaldo Carmus, a 56-year-old physician's assistant, were also arrested and charged for their role in the crime. Philip and Odette were also charged with obstructing justice. Odette's job was to expand the network of corrupt healthcare providers willing to partake in Philip's scam. She bribed physicians and hospitals with money in exchange for patient referrals to the Esformes network, even though it's illegal to refer patients for services billable to Medicare or Medicaid. It's also illegal to receive or give out bribes for healthcare referrals, but that one was obvious. After Odette was subpoenaed by a grand jury in 2016, she created fake medical director contracts to hide the bribe payment she made in exchange for patient referrals. She was trying to recruit more patients to the Esformes network facilities in the Miami area. Carmuz was the physician's assistant who falsified medical records to explain why the government had to pay for medication, treatment, visits, and equipment. Philip was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but former President Trump commuted his sentence before leaving office. Office. In the United States, a sitting president has the power to pardon someone for their crimes, which means that their sentence will be completely eliminated. Donald Trump was known to issue several presidential pardons. In December 2020, he issued 26 pardons to friends and allies, including Roger Stone, Paul Manafort, and Charles Kushner. One of the most infamous presidential pardons was new president Gerald Ford's pardon of Richard Nixon just weeks after Nixon stepped down amid the Watergate scandal. It was highly controversial and may have impacted Ford's loss in the next presidential election. However, Philip wasn't pardoned for his crimes. Instead, he was commuted. This means that his prison sentence was reduced, but not completely eliminated. Unlike pardons, commutations don't restore a prisoner's civil rights or require the prisoner's consent. A statement released by Trump's press secretary said that Philip was already appealing his sentence because of an overly aggressive prosecution that used illegally gathered evidence. Philip's health was apparently declining in prison, but this claim was quickly debunked when photos leaked of Philip 
dancing at his daughter's wedding just 20 days after being released from prison. Philip only served four years out of his 20-year prison sentence. Federal prosecutor Paul E. Peliche slammed the presidential pardon of Philip S. Formes, calling it a kick in the teeth to the agents and prosecutors who were working hard to defend justice for people whose livelihoods and money was stolen from them. Peliche wanted Philip to serve a long sentence to try to make an example out of what happens to criminals who steal from government programs like Medicare and Medicaid. Philip's scam festered for over a decade before the government finally caught on. Florida has a large elderly population, making it a hotbed for Medicare billing fraud and Medicaid scams. Health regulators constantly criticize Florida's inability to keep tabs on ongoing health care fraud cases. As the head honcho of the Esformes Network, the group of assisted living and nursing home facilities owned and run by Philip, he made corrupt decisions that endangered his patients to grow his own fortune. For example, some of the residents at his facilities didn't qualify for some aspects of care because they weren't ill or injured enough to need it. However, the Esformes Network insisted on treating them anyway so that they could bill Medicare and Medicaid for the procedures and treatments. In some cases, this meant prescribing drugs to the point of addiction. Some patients became addicted to narcotics and felt they couldn't leave the Esformes Network because they wouldn't be able to fill their prescriptions. This way, Philip could keep patients in his system to grow and maintain a cycle of fraud. According to Medicare and Medicaid guidelines, a patient can stay up to 100 days at a nursing facility after a hospital stay. Patients are allowed an additional 100 days if they spend six days outside a facility or are readmitted to a hospital for three more days. When patients reach the maximum number of days in a facility allowed by Medicare and Medicaid, the Esformes network would just send them to another of their many healthcare locations. This was done by a corrupt physician who would see the patients and coordinate readmission to the same or a different facility. Not only did they falsify patient treatment records, but they also inflated the price of the equipment and medication used. Philip and the Esformes network accepted kickbacks and bribes to gain business and fill his facility. But his friends insist Philip wasn't motivated by greed. Instead, success drove him over the edge. Philip's indictments also states he sold Medicare patient names to a corrupt pharmacist, which resulted in the arrest of Guillermo and Gabriel Delgado. At the trial, some as former as network staff took the stand as witnesses to testify against Philip. They said Philip would tell them to pay doctors in cash, using the code word fettuccine. As the scam grew, staff were directed to inflate invoices to account for huge kickbacks and bribes. At his sentencing, Philip sobbed for 16 minutes about how sorry he was for the embarrassment he caused friends and family and the crimes he committed against his patients and the federal government. He called himself arrogant and admitted to cutting corners in healthcare. There was no one else to blame but himself. By the time he was sentenced in 2019, Philip had already spent three years in jail. He was convicted of 20 counts of money laundering, receiving healthcare kickbacks, bribery, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. Prosecutors also sought $38.5 million in assets. The jury however, didn't reach a verdict on the main charge of Philip's attempt to defraud Medicare. Prosecutors vowed to retry him on this in addition to five other counts. Philip immediately appealed his sentence, but lucky for him, he spent only one more year in prison before he was commuted by President Trump in 2020. The commutation allowed him to escape prison, but required supervised release and a $43 million restitution. As of April 2021, he still owed $5.3 million of restitution in order to forfeit $38 million. Philip was far from the only one to benefit from the scam. He paid former Ivy League basketball coach Jerome Allen $300,000 in bribes to admit his son to the University of Pennsylvania. At the trial, Allen testified that he wouldn't have recruited Philip's son if not for the bribes. Allen pleaded guilty and was sentenced to probation in exchange for his testimony. He was fined $200,000. Philip was also in contact with Rick Singer, a college admission consultant whose name was at the center of the college admission scandal. He discussed discussed his son's SAT scores with Singer and how he could improve his child's chances of getting into college. His daughter also benefited from the scam with a lavish wedding held at her parents' luxurious multi-million dollar beachfront mansion on New Year's Eve. The wedding was so loud and obnoxious that it angered several neighbors who received a champagne gift basket in advance as an apology for the noise. One of his neighbors took to Twitter to say that after Philip was released from prison, he had his home landscaped, re-roofed, and deep cleaned all in over two weeks. To many, this wedding felt like a slap in the face of the American people whose tax money pays for Medicare and Medicaid, which
which went right into his wallet. It also offended many of the patients he endangered and the legal team who tried to restore justice against him. Not to mention, part of the reason for Trump's commutation of Phillips' sentence was Phillips' supposed poor health. His lawyers told a federal judge that Philip was suffering from pulmonary and upper respiratory problems, which could be lethal in the face of coronavirus. Philip's health didn't seem that poor when he was seen dancing wildly and binge drinking at his daughter's wedding. Philip's sudden clemency showed the American people how you can get the justice you're willing to pay for. In Philip's case, he had the money and connections to get himself out of prison. As a longtime supporter of Jewish synagogues and organizations, Philip had links with the Aleph Institute. This Jewish humanitarian nonprofit group works on prisoners' rights and collaborates with the White House on criminal justice issues. Philip's family donated $65,000 to the group after his indictment. His former's name is seen on a Chicago school associated with Hasidic Jews whose previous leader helped found the Aleph Institute in the 1980s. Trump's son-in-law had close ties to this particular Hasidic group. Not to mention, Philip's father was a rabbi. Alan M. Dershowitz volunteered with the Aleph Institute and said that the group played a prominent role in petitioning for Philip's clemency. But Dershowitz denied that Philip's donations had anything to do with their efforts for clemency on his behalf. Dershowitz had strong ties to Trump before the White House. The Aleph Institute was also involved in at least five other commutations set forth by President Trump. In April of 2021, Justice Department prosecutors vowed to a federal judge to stop at nothing to retry as formas for his role in Medicare and medical fraud. After Philip exhausts his appeals process to reduce his restitution payments, the prosecution plans to do a retrial. Click to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comments section who you would rather have in the presidential office right now, Biden or Trump.